we move towards the present. Ms. Julien Brunneau, uh, from uh, uh, Scuola Normale Superiore in Pisa. Uh, actually, <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> from, uh, from the CNR in Pisa. And uh, here we talk about design of a multi-frequency virtual spectrometer, accurate simulation of vibration and electronic spectra. Okay. All right. Ask me. Um, for this story, I joined the group of Professor Barone in 2006 after having my master's thesis with Professor Carlo Adamo in Paris. So, the elder I joined from the elder, the group of the elder, Professor Barone, and since my PhD, I worked on um, a computation tool that has been in development uh, in the uh, group of Professor Baran, first in Naples and now in Pisa, to assist the interpretation of experimental spectra and also predict spectra. So, um, spectroscopy has become nowadays routinely used to, is now routinely used to um, characterize systems of biological and technological interest uh, in a non destructive manner. And in general, to char fully characterize a system, we, um, several spectroscopies are combined. Each spectroscopy is a complex combination of different effects that we must unravel. And in this case, computational spectroscopy is uh, a valuable tool uh, for this matter. So the most advanced computational methods are able to um, predict very accurately a uh, spectrum of small system, but they don't scale well for larger system. Conversely, for medium to large system, we, um, very approximate models are often used. And first endurance to use computational spectroscopy is that in general, um, they are implemented in uh, independent, very specialized tools, so users need to learn several tools to use them. So the idea is to build, to conceive a virtual spectrometer, which is an ensemble tool or a single tool, accessible through a single user interface, and able to evaluate on demand a large range of spectroscopy properties. So we wanted to meet several requir requirements, which are that it must be versatile, so that we can it support a large range of spectroscopy, modular, so that we can extend it easily. We wanted it to be efficient and scalable so that we could um, go for medium to large systems and also user friendly for non specialists. So, schematically, um, the virtual spectrometer, which has been, um, which is under development, um, is shown in the yellow box. And so, it takes uh, input data primarily from one or more electronic structure calculations. User interacts with the spectrometer through an interface. Where, it can give, where um, additional input data can be given, or also commands for, to control the behavior of the spectrometer. Um, I will speak mostly on two modules. I will speak only on two modules on which I have been working. First, um, the order is historically. I have started on my PhD thesis, so on vibrational resolved electronic spectroscopy. And later, during my postdoc, I was allowed to, this is a great honor, to touch uh, anomalic vibration of spectroscopy on which Professor Barone was directly involved and still working a lot. So, um, starting from vibrational resolved, uh, vibrational resolved electronic spectroscopy, also known as vibronic spectroscopy, uh, we have started um, to work first to implement one photon absorption and one photon emission, and later we decided to also implement electronic socratic rhythm. At this point, it became obvious that if we wanted to extend further our uh, module to add new spectroscopy, we needed to find a way to generalize this equation and to find a way to combine them. In fact, from these equations, we can find a general pattern so that we can have several variables, alpha, beta, gamma, and the properties dA and dB, which are dependent on the spectroscopy. So we only need to implement such equation. And in the case of uh, vibronic spectroscopy, our interest in the computation of this uh, transition integral of the properties dA and dB that we can generally re uh, write as dx. 
So um, to do so, we need some approximation, especially if you want to have an efficient model. So um, the common approximations are the born nightmare approximation and Cartesian con uh, conditions that can, we can write a vibrant spectra as a sum of transition of electronic transition moment between initial and final uh, vibration states weighted by some coefficients. The problem is we don't have an analytic solution for the electronic transition deployment, and so we need to make first approximation. First, uh, Frank uh, observed that um, the electronic jump was done in such a short time that we could consider that we could assume that the nuclei, uh, nuclei are nearly alert, alert, and so we can uh, count on as formalize it uh, mathematically as uh, considering the electronic transition moment as a constant of the property dx as a constant. Erzberg and Taylor proposed the first share improvement by considering that there is a linear variation with respect to the normal coordinates. These two terms are the first terms of a more general Taylor expansion of the property. Uh, at this point, uh, we can write the vibronic spectra as a sum of uh, overlap integrals between uh, in, uh, initial and final vibrational states from the, uh, weighted by uh, the different pro uh, properties of the, uh, by weighted by the transition moment or the derivatives of this electronic transition moment. And um, to do so, since the wave function are expressed in um, two different basis sets, we use the affine uh, transformation proposed by Dushinsky to express the normal coordinates of one electronic state with respect to the other one. At this point, we need to uh, compute, so we need the normal modes from the both states, and we do it by calculating an harmonically, sorry, the potential energy surface. For the initial state, we do it classically, but in this case, when we arrive for the transition, we can choose two approaches. Either we compute the harmonic uh, potential energy surface uh, about the equilibrium structure of the final state, or we can also decide to compute it about um, the geometry of the, of the equilibrium structure of the initial state. So in this case, we have, for the vertical approach, we have a better, a better reproduction of the PS about the frank condon region, but a less accurate uh, PS about the minimum. So each one has its drawbacks and uh, advantages. So the vertical approach gives more accurate uh, intense transition, but the fine structure and the band position are less accurate. The adiabatic uh, approach is uh, more um, equilib uh, equilibrated, we can say, and gives, in general, a better overall spectra, but the intense transition are less accurate. From these two approaches, we can also derive approximated models in which the PS of the final state and the PS, uh, is considered as the same as the PS of the initial state, and this uh, strongly uh, reduces the computational cost of this method, since for the adiabatic approach, we just need the optimization in the final state, geometry optimization in the final state, and for vertical approach, we, just need the, we only need the gradient. So, um, after uh, this, we have also been working more recently, this is the work of Alberto Bayardi, on a time-dependent formulation of our sum over states formulation. So the direct function is rewritten as a Fourier transform, and the Bolton function is also rewritten in another way, so that we can write the intensity as um, um, a Fourier transform of um, as a trace of the property here. And so the advantage of this uh, method is that we can have a non-automatic <coughs> inclusion of all vibrational states, while um, in the case of sum over state, normally we have infinite sum to take into account. So we need to uh, uh, empirically decide to stop the summation at one point. However, the sum over state is able to provide banded assignment. Finally, the, another advantage of the pass integral is that the computation cost for the temperature is absolutely the same, whatever the temperature. So while for some other states, it quickly grows. So we can first also combine the two of them so that we can first uh, compute with pass integral uh, to have an idea of the band shape. And then on the region of interest, we can do a sum over state for band assignment. So here, uh, here, for example, we have used on Anstrasen, which is a very rigid system, so where vibrant spectroscopy is quite straightforward to, uh, to compute, 
uh, we have made a benchmark to, uh, to check the implementation for the time dependent and time independent for a very, uh, let's say, with a higher resolution of the spectra. And we can see that, in general, we have an oscillation from the path integral approach, so we don't exactly have the same um, spectra, but the overall agreement is very high. Also, as I was saying, the path integral approach is um, able to give us information about the temperature. So we can see if we need to take into account temperature effect on, in a sum over state uh, approach for the band assignment. For example, here we used on dimethyl uh, oxyran, so the S0, S3 uh, uh, absorption spectrum. And we can see that a difference of uh, spectra in um, this molecule in solvents, cyclohexane, which was uh, mo uh, modeled with an implicit solvent. Finally, um, this is um, an earlier work by Goshka, where we have, um, we have compared spectrum at high resolution and lower resolution to, uh, for the band experiment. So here we have used the time independent approach to check. And we can see that the jet spectra is very um, accurate. And uh, we are also able to, for example, to take into account odd bands due to the temperature effects. Uh, more recently, I have been working on, uh, so as I was saying, on harmonic vibration spectroscopy together with vibronic spectroscopy. This is what it classical. The first part, which was um, done entirely by Professor Barone, was the calculation of anharmonic vibrational energy. So, um, in order to have an efficient model, we use uh, uh, second order perturbation theory to do it. So, starting from the solution of the harmonic approximation, we made an, exponen an, exponen an expansion sorry, from the harmonic problem. So, the Hamiltonian we used is based on an expansion of the potential energy, surface, uh, uh, potential energy operator adding the third and fourth derivative of the uh, potential energy. And also, um, the Watson Hamiltonian include a kinetic contribution arising from the vibrational angular momentum. So, as I was saying, um, this PG2 approach allows us to have uh, an improvement in accuracy at a reasonable computational cost. This the most expensive part is the computation of these uh, derivatives by numerical differentiation, but which can be straightforwardly parallelized. Uh, what I've been working more uh, directly is a part regarding the intensity, calculation of intensity, because here we know the band position, but for overturn and combinations, the harmonic uh, intensity has vanishing in, uh, is, uh, is null. So we wanted to be able to have a spectra, uh, spectra directly comparable with experiment. So um, we focus in this case on infrared vibrational circular decroism and Raman spectroscopy. Um, the property, the one we need to compute at the anomaly levels are for uh, infrared, the dipole strengths, for the CD, the rotatory strengths, and for the Raman, uh, the Raman activity. And the problem is, at this point, this means that we need to, uh, to compute the anharmonic transition uh, um, integral of three properties, the electric dipole, the magnetic dipole, and the polarizability tensor. Um, here, the magnetic dipole is, is, is function of the uh, momenta, while uh, the electric dipole and, uh, and polarizability tensor are function of the normal coordinates. So this means that we had to at least make two developments. However, uh, we have we switched to a generic property using an ensemble of variables so that we can uh, implement a single uh, property and an equi um, kind of equivalency table so that we compute the transition moment of any property provided that we can have this kind of equivalency table. From there, we, are, we have anharmonic ener vibrational energy and uh, anharmonic intensities, and we can directly compute spectra to compare with experience. So one of the first examples was naphthalene, that was computed, that was calculated uh, like before uh, using the B3LIP uh, density functional theory uh, exchange correction functional, and um, a basis set which has been developed in the group, which is the augmented 
N07D. And experiment, or, uh, experiment was taken from the NIST database. So on this spectra, we can, uh, this is an infrared spectra, and we can see that already the anharmonic is provided a better, um, better band position. So it seems at first that uh, only computed anharmonic vibrational energy would be enough to have accurate spectra. However, if we focus on the region between 800 and 2000 wave numbers, we can see that at this point, the harmonic spectra is missing several bands, which are due to overton and combination bands. And the only way to do it is to have both anharmonic uh, vibrational energy and anharmonic intensities. Uh, switching to another kind of spectroscopy, and another example, which is Hermes Eroxeran, which was done in vacuum. Um, the, the experimental spectra was done by Stephens and Devlin and published in Clarity. They use a um, solvent, but they also, done di um, they also done did sorry, the, um, calculations. They were doing a benchmark on uh, different exchange collection functionals and um, stated that, that it could be, um, this, for this kind of calculation, this could be in vacuum. So for, in our case, we wanted to compare our results with respect to the theoretical and also experimental results of um, Stephens and Devlin's, and so we decided to uh, use, uh, to make our calculation in vacuum. So, an interesting fact about it is, okay, we obtained uh, an overall better agreement with experiment with respect to the harmonic spectra. But also, we noticed that uh, here, for example, most of the bands are already present at the, for the harmonic spectra, but um, for the band assignment, we notice that here, for example, in this region of interest, we have three bands, while the uh, harmonic spectra only has one. And in fact, this was um, assigned by uh, Stephens and Devlin uh, as a transition from the ground state to the, um, to the fundamental uh, band. But this one in the anomaly spectra is not the most important one. And in fact, this is a combination band which is the most intense one. Um, to finish, this is um, far more recent work that has been done by Malgotada Bicesco, where we are comparing different, she's comparing different monomers and dimers of uh, formic acids. And we can see that uh, to reproduce the experimental spectra, uh, most of the features are given by the monomer, but also some of them are given by the uh, cyclic dimer. So we need to take into account several to do it, and we are able uh, straightforwardly to do it. So this feature already gives us a very accurate um, spectra and very interesting uh, results, but we are still in heavy development. Let's say. So uh, we have, as I have um, pointed out, we are working to have uh, modules written in a um, very general way so that we can easily extend it. And so now we are working on adding new uh, vibrational and uh, electronic spectroscopy. We are also uh, working on new modules for the virtual spectrometer. Some of them have been already started and we need to uh, continue to improve them, such as resonance spectroscopies. We, are, we can also, um, some people are working also on providing graphical interface for the input and the output of the virtual spectrometer to make it even easier to use uh, for, uh, in the future. And um, we, for example, if we want to treat uh, large amplitude modes and reaction coordinates, we um, need to include internal coordinate systems. So we are also uh, investigating on this uh, on the, this way. And finally, um, we are starting to devise also interaction between uh, between modules, so that, for example, we can include an harmonicity into a vibronic spectroscopy. Uh, and also between other properties. And this concludes my talk. I would like to thank Professor Baran, with who I'm working, and more directly for this presentation, Margot Satabuschisko, who is working a lot on um, the spectrometer and who has directly contributed for, uh, this, for some of the spectra, and Alberto Bayadi, who was during the thesis, developed the time dependent extension. And thank you for your attention.
Et joyeux anniversaire pour vous. Ok. There is time for questions. I was going to ask that. <laughs> um, it depends on the spectroscopy. For example, um, we're, um, for vibronic spectroscopy, we are only work on implicit solvents. Because um, we have tried, for example, if we want to have direct interaction, we have a tendency to have problems because during the uh, electronic transition, the solvent molecules are moving. So there are a lot of problems there. Also, um, in this case, I didn't want to enter in this case. But Chiara Capelli, for example, is working on a lot on this part, on non-equilibrium solvent effects for vibrational motions. And so there are some yeah, expansion, but this is not my <laughs> domain of expertise, so I didn't want to say anything to outside. Questions? That's very nice anyway, a very nice talk. Um, uh, just wanted to, to um, ask you if you could uh, comment a little bit more on uh, one case that you've shown where you actually needed an harmonicity to uh, reproduce a certain peaks w that were not uh, there at all uh, otherwise. On which aspect? I don't remember. Vibrational or vibronic? The vibronic, I think. You talk about this one. Yeah. Um, what we intend here by anharmonicity is that um, we compute uh, anharmonic frequencies for the um, initial state, so in general the lower, uh, the lower state in this case, and uh, after it we use a scheme, a scheme based on the Dushinsky transformation to extrapolate uh, anharmonic frequencies for uh, the final state. And so we can correct quite well. In fact, here we were comparing, for example, temperature effects, but also, for example, anomalicity, and we can see that we have band position, which are shifted, and we have another improvement in the transition, in the band position. So, uh, but there was a case in which the band was not there at all in the, in, in the case of, in, yeah. There were two bands. Oh, here. No, further, further, further before. Oh, sorry. There, one of them was a combination band. Yeah, I think so. Here, you, you had a spectrum where you couldn't see the combination band. Yeah. The oh, sorry. No, sorry. I, I thought you were thinking about vibrant. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that one. Sorry. Yeah. So, we, your question? No. The, what was the origin of these bands that you? There are combinations and uh, overtones here. In fact, we have vanishing intensities at the harmonic level, so we can't add them. So here they are purely yeah, combinations and overtones. Okay, thanks. Let's thank again Dr. Blonot for a nice presentation. <laughs> Actually, if I may add a comment, uh, it may be my personal impression, but there is some imprinting uh, which is clearly recognizable in the three in the three speakers, which must be traced back to the influence of Enzo. There is a little doubt about that. So, with this note, we can move to the coffee break. And thanks again.